Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be reading Around the Clock by Roz Chast. From 12 to 1, Lynn eats bologna with her imaginary friend Tony. From 1 to 2, in his fanciest pants, Don is digging a hole to France. Do you ever wonder what your friends, enemies, brothers, sisters, and children are doing in the hours when you're not there? This kooky 24-hour tour of a day in the life of 23 different children will reveal answers you'd never expect, except, of course, from Roz Chast. Beloved New Yorker cartoonist Chast is at her finest in this rock-around-the-clock brimming with her trademark stamp of zany humor. From six to seven, Pete is up, drinking from his favorite cup. From seven to eight, Billy's muse tells him to paint the room chartreuse. From eight to nine, Bee likes to see her favorite program on TV. From nine to ten, Deb has forgotten. Are unicorns real or are they not? In? From 10 to 11, Hazel Jane puts 100 marbles down the drain. From 11 to 12, Lou is snoring. That's because his life is boring. From 12 to 1, Lynn eats bologna with her imaginary friend Tony. Gee, Tony, your lunch looks delicious as usual. From 1 to 2 in his fanciest pants, Don is digging a hole to France. From, tw from 2 to 3, Ian's in school. Long division can be so cruel. From 3 to 4 in the grocery store, Anne throws a tantrum on the floor. From 4 to 5, Patty's in luck. Here comes a frozen toasty truck. From five to six, Steve is able to help his mother set the table. Perfect. From six to seven, Sophie cries. That's because dinner is liver surprise. How do you know you won't like it? You haven't even tasted it. From seven to eight is bath time for Shelley. If you don't take a bath, you will get very smelly. What is that disgusting smell? A rotten bologna and cheese sandwich? Did a bag of garbage suddenly explode? From 8 to 9, please observe Ricky. Why does his toothpaste taste so icky? From 9 to 10, Lynn can't understand why someone would knit pajamas by hand. Your great-grandma Clara worked for two years on these pajamas and you're going to wear them. End of story. From 10 to 11, it's the worst. Poor little Emma is dying of thirst. Just one more glass and could you bring one for foofers? Not too cold. Foofers doesn't like it cold. From 11 to 12, though no one can see him, Dave is planning a sock museum. From 12 to 1, Jill dreams she can fly. It's easy, like swimming, just up in the sky. From 1 to 2, small John Paul worries about wires in the wall. From 2 to 3, Andy's awake, having some milk and a morsel of cake. From 3 to 4, Alice becomes L-Man, master of bongo drums. From 4 to 5, you'll see June in a garden she grows by the light of the moon. From five to six, Pete's dreams are clear. Behold, I am Pete, the mighty king of all the dinosaurs. 
is not true. You not dinosaur. You not king. You Pete, tiny, smallish human. Look how small you fit inside teacup. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, teacup. But when he wakes up, They all disappear. The end. Thanks for watching. Hope you liked this book, Around the Clock by Ross Chast. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time. Bye. Bye.